Today, only very lazy marketing people are not cheering for the future of live broadcast shopping as the most powerful long-term instrument for online sales in the post-COVID world. Even a brief glance at the China market case for it seems to prove the point immediately. Just check out the figures. But let's take a minute to look more closely into this thing. 90% of China retail market is shared by three digital marketplaces and social commerce giants. Independent retail is basically non-existent in that market. These three players are being a one-stop service, not just for the shopping, but for virtually everything from social interaction and entertainment to personal finance and dealing with all everyday routines. The sheer amount of organic and motivated customer traffic on these platforms turned virtually any interesting shopper feature into a thing, with a low price and high convenience for vendors. Understandingly, in your markets, Amazon and other large digital marketplaces, as well as social media apps, are quickly picking up on this and will promptly offer you the same. Should big brands go for it? Sure you would be crazy not to tap into that trend. But also, as a big brand, you cannot ignore the fact that in your market, independent retail, including your own, makes for a huge portion of your sales, and more importantly, for obvious reasons, it is the strategic sales channel you want to develop and empower in long-term future. So, how does the live broadcast sales look in this light? We see three main drawbacks for brands and independent retailers using live broadcast shopping experience as the competitive instrument of growing sales in the long term. Natalia, can you share our thoughts on this one? Sure. We see three main factors that every brand and retailer should seriously consider before getting into this story. First of all, it's media advertising costs. In order to make it really work, and we have to keep in mind that a worldwide average independent retail online shop conversion rate is about 2.5%, and we're not talking about Amazon or AliExpress at the moment. So each live stream session requires a wide and well-targeted advertising campaign done way ahead to subscribe the audience and keep it motivated before the session. And you will need to use your most engaging creative storytelling ad formats, meaning the most expensive ones, to be sure that you get not just a subscription, <laughs> but a highly motivated subscription. That's why your media advertising agency is probably all over you with live stream shopping opportunities. But come on, to how many of such campaigns can you commit annually? Second of all, it's content production costs. Initially, as most of those who cheer for this format say, Production costs of a live stream session seem quite attractive, but to squeeze out all the potential of this format and stay competitive with it long term, brands and independent retailers will soon have to exponentially grow their spendings. With 4-5 minutes of attentions that you'll get on average, you will constantly need better influences, richer sets, brighter interactions, cooler entertainment. Soon, your live stream shopping will turn into a production value contest and with significant growth of conversions, you very well might end with a negative ROI. No matter what your digital and social media marketing creative partners are selling you on this one, we do remember what happened to the last century creative superstar formats, don't we? And thirdly, it's brand image and reputation costs. It's easy to imagine how this customer experience format and mechanics gets quickly commoditized. Committing to this instrument as the strategic means of sales growth, you are handing over the most intimate moment between your brand and your customer to an army of essentially bloggers, 
whose influence and power will quickly depreciate. Once they get fully committed to video sales, doing monthly dozens of two, six hours live stream shopping sessions for a living, the power of your brand will weaken along with their own social influence. It can hardly be wise to hand over the only thing that you have full control over and that can differentiate you the most, your customer relationship, to people who have their own wider social agenda. Dragart. Thanks, Natalia. Still, does this mean that we think live broadcast shopping is a bad thing to go with? No, we do believe that this new TV shopping 2.0, because it is what essentially it is, will work great in two distinctive use cases. First, as a technical sales promotion instrument. High season sales support, tactical brand promotions, substitute for in-store promotions, etc. Uplifting your tactical promo campaigns with such an instrument can deliver a very good bang for your buck. And secondly, as brand awareness and engagement tool when launching new products and services, communicating brand values and territory, connecting to loyal audiences and micro-influencers. But when it comes to strategic sales impact, we believe that the future transformation shopping should be a live shopping experience happening on demand, not being broadcasted about recreating the long forgotten brick and mortar experience of personal, intimate, one-on-one -on -one experience between your customer and your product, mediated by currently most underappreciated micro-influencer that is completely absent in your digital commerce equation. Your salesperson, product consultant, or in-store promoter. The one and only influencer that for hundreds of years of retail history can do one thing in four minutes that no digital influencer can nearly do as good. Get up close and personal, show genuine expertise, create trust and close the deal.